there have been different uh, portions of the Bible at different phases. But fortunately, I was uh, um, blessed to be part of a ministry early on in college. And the pastor preached on this verse, which was Romans 12, 2, and has just been my mantra for ministry. Um, like in the Jewish tradition, the one I study daily, which is do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may discern the will of God, which is good and right and perfect. The greatest joy in ministry has been working with laity to develop leadership and to help people find their calls. And as they do that, I renew my own call. Um, I've always thought that call and appointment were really separate from each other. God calls, the church appoints, the bishop appoints. And so there's just great joy as people find new ways to serve. And when they do that, I found new ways to serve. And that's how churches, I think, grow, is that when you find that as a joy, it doesn't feel like a burden or work, and people love discovering that together. What do we all have to share with each other? I mean, advice to folks still serving or younger clergy is great. And I have learned that I have as much to learn from my younger colleagues or colleagues with less years of service as they might have from me. And being open and curious and excited about what they have to offer is so important. Uh, my wonderful beloved father-in-law used to joke that, you know, you need to make friends younger than you so there's someone to attend your funeral. <laughs> and I feel like you need to be listening to people younger than you so your last years of ministry aren't like a funeral and you're all half, half dead, right? So you want to keep learning from each other. And um, at the, my last church, I've been followed by a pastor who could have well been my, my own child. And I'm already learning things from him in retirement, just reading the church newsletter. So I think always be open to learning from everybody and growing together. And then you're not gonna grow old in the ministry. You're just gonna keep that fresh edge, hopefully, um, that uh, you have when you first start. Proverbs uh, chapter three, verses five and six. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge God and God will direct your path. That has been my mantra verse from the very, very beginning of um, to discern my call. The second one for me is out of 1 Corinthians 9, where Paul says, I have become all things to all people so that in all possible ways I might save some. And that has been the verse that has, has kept me going. And even when things seem to be difficult, that was the verse that kept me going that i needed to be fully present in a way that would be honorable and respectful to whomever i was with my absolute passion has always been to empower people in their gifts and when i see someone stepping into their authority and their gifting and begin to get that support that they need to be able to be affirmed in their gifting I love to step back out of the spotlight and just applaud. And that for me, those moments for me are, are the moments that keep me going and continue to give me a desire to come alongside of people and empower them in their gifts so that they can become servants in the kingdom. I'm gonna go back to the individual that I interviewed when I was still in seminary. Our assignment was to interview a, a a clergy who had been part of the ministry for many, many years. I chose George McLean. Some of the folks listening remember wow. George. I think George at that time was probably 88, maybe 89. And I went to George with a list of 10 questions and chose to start with the last question. And I asked George, George, what would be the advice that you would give me as a brand new clergy that will sustain me through my ministry in a way that I will not only be effective, but will be the best pastor I can be. And this is all he said, grow duck feathers. And when I asked him to explain it to me, he said, you'll figure it out. And over the last 22 plus years, that was such a profound statement because I realized that 
the thicker my duck feathers got, the easier it was for me to not take things personally and allow things to just roll off my back and give them to God. And that advice for me has gotten me through some pretty tough circumstances. The appointment that I was in started out very difficult for me. And it was those three words that kept me going along with Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. So new pastors, start growing your duck feathers right now because you're going to need them. You're going to need that anointing oil that will allow everything that comes at you that feels personal to roll off your back and just give it to God. From Amos, uh, Martin Luther King's favorite quote about justice rolling down like an ever flowing stream. Um, when I was called to ministry, it was um, to bring justice into the world. And that's been this, that's been the scripture that's inspired me. I preached a sermon one Pentecost where uh, everyone was handed a little sheet of paper with a flame on it. And um, at the end of the sermon, everyone was supposed to hold the flame over their own head and then look around and recognize each other's flame. And uh, I didn't know whether that would work or not, and it came off great. And I've, I've remembered that moment ever since. Have fun. If, if it isn't fun, you shouldn't be doing it. Um, the spirit is, the, that works within us is to bring us joy and, and, and help us through our sorrows and um, figuring out how to, what to do today and what to do this week and what to preach on Sunday and all of that it should be an enjoyable, engaging and challenging experience. And I, to me, that's fun. So uh, uh, if it ain't fun, don't do it.